I'm Pastor Nate. Good to have you here this morning. It's an honor to stand up here this morning uh, before you. But I believe uh, the Lord has a story to tell you this morning. Actually, what I heard in my heart. Um, I want to hear the story of the gospel for the first time. Do you ever want to hear the story? Could, can you imagine what it was like the first time? Like the first time I laid eyes on you, right? Ev? No, you know what I'm talking about, the first time, like the, the, going back to the first time, and I was, there was a song that was the second song that we sang this morning, and uh, on our order of service, there was actually three songs in the set, and um, in the second song, I was listening to it last night after I got home, and I was just thinking, whoever sings that, I hope they tell the story. You understand what I'm saying? You know how you can sing a song, but you can sing a story? Like you can sing words or you can sing the story of things that were dead and you're telling the story things were dead. And and, and then Christ came. And um, anyway, so I I just believe in this morning that we would hear what we hear this morning for the first time. That we'd hear the story and be like those kids that would be, uh, would say, Daddy, tell me again about that time. Tell me again about that time. And, uh, and so, Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you it's light to us. We thank you for bringing us here today and for the connections uh, that you've, uh, you've designed us to be a part of. We just thank you that we have ears that hear this morning. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Uh, uh, this, the title of this morning's message, we've been in this series, and, and my wife told me this, that, that it seems like we've been talking about the same things even though we've changed the series. And so we've been in this series called Voices, uh, really all through summer, just talking about voices and all the voices that are going on in this world and, um, and how to determine the right voice and all that. And our, 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 our scriptures that we've been hanging in is in 1 John chapter 4, and that was one through three. It was talking about don't believe every spirit. And we talked about spirit meaning, or pneuma meaning breath, uh, wind, uh, or the essence of life. And so don't believe every breath. And we talked about who's breathing on you, recognizing who's breathing on you. And he tells us, goes on to say, this is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Or every spirit, every breath that speaks of Jesus' lordship. Okay, because if Jesus didn't come in the flesh, he was not the Christ. You understand, he didn't finish the work. There is no, there, everything that we're talking about doesn't matter. But he says, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist. And we talked about that um, at, <clears throat> in this, uh, uh, the, the series of voices and talking about Antichrist simply means replacement Christ. How many of you know? If you take a, a rattle from a baby uh, or whatever, a toy, uh, they're going to be very upset unless you give them the truck, right? And this is what the goal would be is to, uh, for the enemy would be not to, to, to be so blatant that you get all upset and you, and you lose your rattle or you lose what you, what you held. No, he just wants to give you something a little bit different in place of it, but what he gives you is that which would bring, bring destruction in our life because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It's like getting a, give a rattle for a jack-in-the-box. Ah, oh, God, you know, right? Anyway, uh, then, 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 oh, this is great, and then bam, right? <laughs> bam. All right, there. anyway, so then we, and so that, that was what we talked about in voice, is just talking about recognizing God's voice and, and talking about uh, who's breathing on you. And, and then we, just three weeks ago, we, we switched over to just verse four in this, and I titled the series Independent, not independent as in by ourselves, but as in where we're led from the inside. We're to be led from the inside. And, uh, and, and he says this in verse 4. It says, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them. And what he's talking about is he that's in the world. Because, he, uh, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Overcoming them is the voices. Overcoming all the voices that are in the world. And he says, "Great. well, how can you overcome them? Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So here's, so that's the setup and really trying to the recap of, and I'm not going to go through the last few weeks, but I wanted to make that clear to learn how we trust and how you and I overcome. We overcome by the Spirit of God who's in us and the Spirit's job, according to the Word of God, is to bring us the Word of God over every situation. And it says in verse 4, it says, greater is He. 
In other words, the voice of God will be greater or will come to you and it will be heard above the other voice, but it still must be acknowledged. And that's what I want to talk about this morning because in this, what you believe matters. Did you know that? What you believe matters huge. Oh, I, I just don't really know what I... Listen, what you believe matters huge. Huge. But here's the deal. How you receive determines what you believe. And so this is what we're talking about being independent. Last week uh, on Wednesday, uh, Landon ministered on being led by the Spirit. I kind of hit on that a little bit the week before and then took a detour um, onto some other things. But I'm telling you, how you receive determines what you believe. He doesn't tell us that we're to be led uh, by everything that, that that's going on, by a by uh, the car that drives by, or by the circumstances in our life. He tells us that we're to be led from the inside. Because if you want to overcome, if you want to to walk in what God's prepared for you, what's available for you, you're going to have to access it by what you believe. You and I don't realize how much we're accessing every day by what we believe. Just don't believe me? Landon shared something on a text thread the other day, and he said, learn to receive, it was, a, I don't know where he got it, but it said, learn to feel compliments as deeply as you do insults. Man, how many of you know compliments, you know, have you ever given an insult just because you're mad, you really didn't mean it, but it just came out, you're just like, you idiot, oh, you're so stupid, or I don't know what it is. This is, at my house, this happens with our kids at times, and it, uh, and, and it, just the other day, there was, a, there was a fight, and I got upset that there was a fight, and it was just a, out of a response of somebody pestering somebody, and it, it escalated real quick out of just nothing. It wasn't even, we really weren't in a big deal, but then it ended up becoming a fight because the person ended up getting hurt, and I jumped in the middle. How many of you know when Daddy Bear jumps in, right? You hear this blood-curdling scream. It was this towel snap. How many of you know, you're just playing around, but when one of those really connects, and you hear the snap, right? And I was like, and then you hear the scream, and then I hopped up. And it wasn't intended to be that way. And that's a lot of times, you know, insults. But compliments, you know, you actually have to think about that. So why don't we feel those deeper? Because the enemy would like to keep us uh, not, not knowing what God says about us. Again, you and I are making decisions every day simply, and we're connecting to things simply because of what we believe. What you believe about how your, your wife or your husband or this person, what they think about you, all of a sudden there's now new ways for you to act. What you believe about your business, maybe you're supposed to expand but what, you're, what you believe, because you're looking at the, this thing and this thing and this thing, and the Lord would say, hey, I want you to step out, and that's what you get in here. Right? I think now's the time, but everything out here looks wrong. What you believe keeps you still. What you believe, even though in here you're hearing this, but you believe because of this and because of this and because of this, and we're leaning to our understanding Right? That's what, how we're formulating our belief, how we're receiving, we hold still. We, there's, every day we are receiving because of how we believe, because of where we find our information. I'll say it this way, because of what we're tuned into. What are you tuned into? What are you tuned into today? Are you tuned into to, to your spirit, man? Are you turned into the, the word of God, which the Bible tells us is spirit? Listen to this in, in Matthew chapter eleven fourteen. Through 17. This is Jesus talking about the generation, and, and, and I believe it's really fitting right now. He says, what am I going to say, uh, or let me go to verse 11, or 14 rather, uh, and start there. And if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. So Jesus is talking about John the Baptist and who Elijah who was to come. And he was to come before Jesus came back, and he's to come again before Jesus' final return. Okay, not the rapture, but before Jesus' final return. There's going to be two, the Bible tells us, that'll be, uh, ha have power, and I believe it's Enoch and Elijah, but anyway, that's, that's a whole nother, nother point. But this was a testimony that Jesus even said to the Jews, hey, wake up, Elijah has come, if you'll, receive, if you'll accept it, 
If you'll accept it, here's the thing. There's a lot of things we're not willing to accept or be led by because we're fed by something else. If you're already full, so last night I, I kind of made a mistake, all right? Um, we had team night. So we had, you know, a couple hundred people here, uh, B team, had uh, uh, some good food. Come on, somebody. That was good. Uh, so and great food. And then we had like these really awesome dessert bar. It was like four tables long. It looks sweet. Chocolate cupcakes, cinnamon rolls, come on, pumpkin scones. Come on, somebody help me out. Bread pudding from Landry's. I mean, it was like the stuff, right? I was like, okay. And, you know, cookies. And, I mean, it was so good. It looked so good that, he, you know, every, the plates are like this big for dessert. But the plates had at least four desserts that left that table because it looked that good. Well, I made that mistake uh, of not following the order of service. And... Uh, and I dismissed this half of the room first to go get food, right? And then you kind of feel bad for the half that sat on the wrong side, right? But if you were led, you would have sat on that side anyway. Um, <laughs> so then I'm like, okay, let's speed this up a little bit, you know? Uh, and so then I'm like, hey, if you're on this side, I know the line's not ready yet, but you can go get your dessert first. And I was supposed to do that during the prize giveaway, keep you getting desserts and whatever. So... The, the people over here hadn't, hadn't really ate anything yet. So when you go back to the dessert table, how many of you know when you haven't eaten anything yet and you go to the dessert table, you're like, Lord Jesus, <laughs> right? And you just, and it did, it looked super, super good. Uh, and shout out to all the ladies that helped make that look awesome. It was, and the stuff was good, right? Um, but you know, that's what happens to us a lot of times. We're already fed by something else, so we're not willing to be led. In other words, Right here, verse 14, if you're willing to accept it, and so this is Jesus talking to the Jews about him being the Messiah. He says, if you're willing to accept it, John was the Elijah that was to come and, and the prophecy of Jesus coming. Uh, the, it's all through prophecy that he was already supposed to come, but, but they missed it. They weren't ready, they think. But the Bible tells us that their eyes are going to be open and see. And I mean, all through, oh, it's so cool. So cool. But here's what he says, if you're willing. If you're willing to accept it. Isn't that interesting how our will is involved in what we believe? Oh, I'm just not, I, I just can't believe that. You can't or you won't. I just can't believe that. No, no, no. You have just seen too many other things. You have just experienced too many other things. You, you and I have chosen to be led in a way that is not what God designed you and I to be led by, that is the way that is greater than the things that you're facing in this world. And when your kids are, and things are happening in this way, maybe they're growing up and you see this is going on, you can be led by what it looks like. Or you can be led by what God says about the situation. Because what God said about any situation, when he said it, saw that it was dark, he didn't say, man, gee, sure is dark out here. Jesus, Holy Spirit, what do you think? No, he said, let there be light. There was a, the, words of, the word of God is actually what prepares or creates pathways to walk on. This is why Elijah, keep this up there, you're awesome, was sent before Jesus to prepare a way, a voice, right? Crying in the wilderness, the Bible tells us, to prepare the way of the Lord. There is a way of the Lord for you that before you were ever born, God created. The Bible tells us this very clearly, and he for, created good things for you and I to walk in. It's his plan. But just because it's available doesn't mean you can receive it or you will receive it. It's according to what you Oh, according to what you Oh, so what I believe really does matter. No, it matters way more than you think. Way more than I think. Way, way, way more. What I believe. What I believe determines whether or not I sleep at night. Whether or not things are lined up in my body because of stress and care and this and that. Because of simply what I believe. 
because of how I've been receiving my information, because of how I'm taking in what's going to be. I'm hearing voices. I'm using these eyes. And, and, and because that's how I tune in, I'm missing the very thing that's available for me, which is in me. And the Holy Spirit, the Spirit is greater to bring about, listen, the same Spirit, according to Ephesians, that raised Christ from the dead. Actually, before we uh, continue on, let's jump over to Ephesians chapter 1, 18, and we're going to come back here. Ephesians 1, 18. Paul prays this. He says, I pray, listen, that the eyes of your heart, the eyes of your understanding right here would be enlightened. Not here, but right here would be enlightened. In other words, that light would shine here bigger and that you would know that what is in you is this power that is for you. Listen to this. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope or the picture. So now you're seeing a picture that's not a picture that was formulated here or with these eyes or with these ears, but you now have a picture that was birthed in your heart from the word of God okay about every situation and that word of God can take what's dark and make light what's lack and create blessing what's broken bring restoration dry bones live yet you have to speak you have to come into agreement with what he says it's so important what you believe because whether you realize it or not what you believe is coming out of your mouth all the time and it's shaping our lives. And we're going to have to learn to become more independent. Instead of all the things out here. Not isolated to self. But trusting in what we see here. The riches of it. Uh, he says this. That we would know the hope to which is in call, we've been called. And the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Next verse. And his in, that we would know this. This is what he wants us to know. That we would know the incomparably great. So what do you compare that to? It's the same word, or the same, the same uh, 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 point he's making here is that greater is he, 1 John 4, 4, greater, mega, it's where we get this word mega, megas, me, like exceedingly great, greater than great. It's like, not the 32 ounce, it's the 44. Come on. It's the trucker cup. Come on. How do you compare something that's incomparably great? You can't. Something that's incomparably great compared to what is being spoken and what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing. His word is in, not just his word, but listen, it's his incomparably great power for us who believe. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. For us, that is, this is NIV, this is probably the best, that one word, for, is probably the best translation that, that, I, that, I, that you find, just because, or there's other ones that use the word for too. But it's that, the, in that word, if you were to look it up, it doesn't just mean for, it means in and upon. In and upon. And so the Spirit of God was given to you to dwell in us, but also upon us. So he's saying there is a power that's not just in you when you receive Christ, but there is a power also upon you. But I pray to be a witness and to testify of who Christ is and to make a statement about what you believe in your heart and power would, would, would be on the scene and so others would believe because they're seeing what you're believing because of the Word of God coming out of your mouth and power being present. This is Maybe that's a mouthful, but guess what? Your spirits are hearing things for the first time, maybe. Glory to God. I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened and that you would know the hope to which you've been called and that you would know the exceeding or un uncomparable greatness of his power. Listen, for you. One translation says, towards us. Like he's turned towards us, ready to, come on. Who believe? Who do what? Oh, what you believe matters. What we believe matters. It matters so much. And where I find or how I receive determines what I'm going to believe. This is why you've maybe heard it said that if you're, all you're watching is, is social media and the news, your depression is your own. It's self-inflicted. Your fears are self-inflicted because of how you're receiving is determining what you believe. And I'm talking even about the elections. Listen, our hope is not in an election. 
Our hope is in the Lord. And if we, if, if you're wanting to vote for President Trump and, and you're like, oh, we just need him in the office, and then after November 3rd, you decide to sit on your butt and not pray, God, help us. Somebody else get in the office. Somebody get Pelosi in. Somebody get somebody else in. Because we need to be praying and put our trust in the Lord, not in Trump. And that's a wake-up call for the church. Guys, our hope's in the Lord. Now, I don't, I don't, you, you, you vote for who God says, but I'm just saying, don't put your trust in a man. Put your trust in the Lord. He never said, have faith in Pastor Landon. Have faith in Pastor Nate. Have faith in Joe. He's a good guy, pretty d- dependable, always there and on time. No, he said, have faith in Man will disappoint you all the time. Well, I just thought this policy. I just thought this. Well, I just thought she would have done this. I just thought they would have done that. No, have faith in God. Us who believe. There's a power given to you by God by what you believe. We're going to look at a few more scriptures here this morning in that thing. But I want you to see you even describe this power. This, this power or that power is the same. Somebody say the same the same power. So that means there, there is no difference. They're the, the exact same. As a matter of fact, the same, it's not like there's two of them, there's one of them. There's one power. It's the same one. How many of you know if I had a water bottle up here that looked the same with the label tore off and I held them, would they be the same? Well, they look the same, but they're not the same, are they? No, they're different. The same. There is absolutely no difference between the power that that that, as the mighty strength. Next verse. That that God exerted right as when He raised Christ from the dead and seated Him at the right hand in heavenly places. Go ahead. Next verse. Far above. This is this this is the power that's in and toward us, for us. This is the spirit that lives on the end. The same power. There is no difference. You didn't get a lesser dose of the Holy Ghost. That was right. Hey, that's good. For real. He's not holding out on you. He's a good dad. He doesn't give you the squishy grapes and eat the hard ones. <laughs> My kids are old enough now. They don't... They. They. they Anybody know what I'm talking about? We're fruit snobs at our house. Oh, man. And those grapes this morning in the fridge? Come on. Oh, never mind. Don't say that. I want to make sure and eat most of those. Kids, you know, there's no grapes in the fridge. There's hard, hard, big green grapes that are sweet and so hard, and it's so good. But when the kids were little, you know, you could give them the squishy ones, and they would eat them. <laughs> Now we can't. (laughs) We have a good father. He doesn't, he gives us the same. What he, what he uses, what he partook of, that's what he gave. That's a good father. Hey, are you willing to believe? Go back to, go back to that if you can, Matthew chapter 11. I love this. I love I love this confrontation that Christ comes and he talks to the people and he says, hey, if you're willing to accept it, I love that. Your will is so involved with what you believe. And the Bible tells us where, where to place our trust and, and where, to, the, the, what, what, uh, where, where to find our direction. Yet some, somehow we still think we know better. Now, I saw this thing on YouTube, it's been years ago, and then there's this guy up there, uh, you know, it was apologetics, Christian apologetics, you know, where somebody's talking, and they're like, well, I just don't believe that, and that, this guy was an atheist, right? And uh, he was a smart dude, right? And so he said, well, you know, I, I think you're just incredibly smart. And he said, well, thank you, you know. And, uh, and he said, but of all the world's knowledge, he drew a circle. He said, how much information... Do you, do you think you know of everything of knowledge in the entire world? Everything. And he said, and so he drew like, he started, began to color in the circle. 
and he began to color it in. He saw everything. I'm talking about everything about nature, everything. And he began to color it in. And he colored it in about 25% of the circle. And he said, yeah, probably only about that. He goes, you're pretty wise. You are pretty smart. You realize that you don't know everything. And that there's a lot of things that you don't know. But you're capable of learning. You're capable of learning. But what you're telling me today is that you hold to 25% of all knowledge and in 75% of all the other knowledge, you're saying that God doesn't exist because you don't know about him in only 25%. So you're telling me there's a chance. Like three out of four. How many of you are going to play those odds? But you are so hell-bent on saying, nope, because of what I see and what I think. And the fact of the matter is, is he's already given us a word, but the enemy's got us so duped into being right here and right here and right here that we, we omit and don't even acknowledge the, us who we are at our core. Your spirit knows things. The Holy Spirit knows things. It's God's spirit in you. Just the spirit of a man, the Bible says. It's written on every man, eternity in their hearts. You don't have to be, it doesn't have to become proof to you or explained to you to know right here there's a God. Because it's already been written there by God himself. And for you and I to deny it is simply is simply pride and for you and I to say that we know better even though what we hold is incomplete knowledge and we make decisions every day by what we believe not only do we make decisions what we receive is simply a product of what we believe let's keep on going to Matthew chapter eleven fourteen. he says if you are willing to accept it he is Elijah who was to come Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Be willing to receive the story of Christ. It's not the story, it's the truth. Stories is the formulation of how it all came together, how God had a plan, and how God had a plan when man made a plan, God made a plan to bring back what he loved so much. And that's you and I. Listen to this. He says, to what can I compare to this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. And here's what he says. Can you imagine? He said, and he said we're, we're, what's happening is, uh, next, next verse. He says, we played the pipe for you and you did not na- dance. We sang, a, I can't, dirge, okay? Phonics. We were doing, haven't pulled up this phonics thing? Squirrel. All right. Caleb's doing this home, like this, like reading program, homeschool reading program thing. And so she has all these flashcards, and they're like IR and all these. And she said, what does that one say? And I'm like, uh, I didn't know them. Like, I'm like legitly, I, I was behind. <laughs> First grade. Anyway. <laughs> dirge. All right, I know that now. Dirge. So we sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. So here's what he's saying. Elijah, or not Elijah, but John the Baptist came, and he, his message was one of repentance, and you ought to feel bad for your sins. And, and you know what? You're like the kids playing in the streets, that yelling to each other, hey, throw me the ball! And here's this funeral procession going on. Like, you, there's, a, there's a song going on, and you're like, you're, you're not even acknowledging the message that's being heard. You're just playing the ball, you're yelling across the street to the other friend, hey, throw that over here, hey, watch out, watch out. And you're just running through the middle of the funeral procession. And John the Baptist, God has sent a voice, the ones filled with the Spirit from the first one that ever had the Spirit of God from the beginning, from the day he was born, is here on the earth, and he's a voice speaking, declaring, and there's, there's knowledge, there's wisdom, there's information being broadcast and It doesn't make any difference to you. That's what he says. You guys are like that. He said, and then then one came that came and began to play a delightful song, began to play on pipes, or or began to play a a praise and, and a party song, and you're still playing in the streets yelling at each other, and you should be 
so excited. And that's Jesus. He come with the message of the gospel. You know what that's called? Good news. And you know what, what, what he says, this is what the generation is doing. Acting like they never even heard it. Because, listen, you can hear the message and not hear the message. Because the words of God are not, the Bible says they are spirit. And so where they're heard is here. And if you struggle to hear the voice of God, it's, I can tell you it's because you don't spend time with the word of God. Pure, plain and simple. His words are spirit. Where they speak to you is here. When I'm speaking today, I'm not speaking to your heads. I'm speaking to your hearts to awaken. Father, melt our, melt even our hearts this morning. I saw a picture in my heart when I was sta- worshiping the Lord. I saw uh, just that I heard that, that, that word where the Bible says in Jeremiah, he took a coal and he touched my lips. And I, I, when, when, when I heard that verse, I just saw hearts of metal, not just stone, but like just Metal, like barricaded, self-barricaded, not just a heart a heart of stone, but just melting because of the heat of the Word of God. The Word of God is alive. It's like a fire, a hammer. The Word of God is powerful. And it can break through. The Bible says it's sharper than any sword. It'll break through and punch right through. And it will bring discernment to you concerning every situation. And the greater one on the inside of you, the greater one, the the Spirit of God on the inside of you, will echo back the word that you're hearing from God and say, that's it. He was here, sent here to testify to us so that you can make the call. He's testifying all the time. And we're making the call. Listen to this, because I only got through one verse (laughs) today. I want you to hear um, so many times we struggle to tune into the right station our heart because of all the static that's around us. You'll see in Matthew chapter 6 where he talks about uh, take no thought saying what shall we eat. What, it's the what's. We talked a little bit about this last week. It's the what's and the who's. Right? It's the anything. That, that it's anything that's going and everything that's going on that would try to separate us from hearing what God says about any given situation. He wants to make it bigger. The enemy loves to make things look bigger. Okay? But Listen to this, uh, and so I want to, I want to, I want to hit on. Uh, no, I want to, I want to go here because what you believe matters. Ephesians two eight through nine, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. So it's by grace you've been saved through faith. You, what you receive is simply based upon what you believe. Again, not what's available. What you, what you receive is simply based upon what you believe, not what's available. You know what's available? God's grace. It's given to you. God so loved the world. That's everybody. Are you in this world? Well, he, he loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for you, to make a payment for you. So that grace could be made available. So that your, the price of sin could be, on your behalf, could be paid for. Uh, now what's available to you is righteousness. Or right standing with God. And fellowship with the Father or a partner in life. That's what's available to you. Door number one. Would you like it? Uh, I just don't believe that. Okay. Well, you can have hell on earth. But I've come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly and to the full till it overflows. The God kind of life, Zoe life, right here, door number one, number one, number one. One more time coming at you. I don't believe that. 
even today. It's not your first time you heard this. Some of you, it might be. Some of it, it's the first time that you're hearing it. Because it, you're hearing it. Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who... It matters what you believe. It matters huge what you believe. Here's the message in Romans chapter 8. 1 through 4, listen to this. Therefore, this is the story to be heard for the first time. This is the story that, Lord, let me hear the story. Therefore, or now, there is now. What's now? Yeah, but you don't know what happened last night. When's now? There is therefore now. When? Now. There is therefore now no condemnation. In Christ. For those, for those who are in Christ. Listen. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free. There is a law. There is a decree. Listen. That's what a law is. A decree of the breath of God. The law of the spirit of life. The breath of God. There is a decree that was made by the very words of God in heaven when Christ paid with his blood. And he said, the law is a, liberty, a life and of Christ Jesus. Anyone who's in Christ is now made whole. Now made alive. Dead to sin. Punishment paid. Listen, he says it right here. This is what he says. Because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law or the decree of sin and death. For what the law, and this happened when Adam and Eve ate off the tree, sin and death entered. When, when sin entered, death entered, the Bible tells us. And he says that the law of the Spirit sets you free from that law. Verse 3, for what the law was powerless to do. So now he's talking about there was a law that was given to man to show our weakness. He says the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by our flesh. And that's what we're leaning to so often, what we see and what we hear. He says God did not... God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. This is why Jesus had to become a man, to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You can be born again and live in such a way that you do not reap the benefits on this earth that he paid for on the cross. Available, not delivered. What do you believe? Because it matters. What do you believe? Where, how are you receiving today? How are you receiving about the, the, what it looks like about your child? How are you receiving with, concerning your finances? How are you receiving concerning your health? It, 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 is your health up to your eating plan? I mean, you follow the direction of the Lord, but at some point, you're going to have to trust in something more than broccoli and kale. At some point, we're going to have to believe that the blood of Jesus, and, and we've been grafted in and make a declaration that my blood is like the blood of Christ because that's what I got here because that's what I got. I don't have one up here. Here, that's what I got in the Word. That's what I got. That's what I got. I didn't ask what you saw. I didn't ask what it looked like. I asked what did he say because whatever he says, I can choose to adjust what I believe. Guys, it's time that we are willing to accept something other than what we've been fed by and begin to be led by the inside. Be led, be independent. Guys, there's voices everywhere. 
They're loud. They're changing. They're filled with fear and strife and and hate. And then there's things that talk about goodness and you try to stay on the good side. But the crazy thing is, you get on the good side and then it flops on you. I'm going to read uh, Romans 8, 28 through the end of the chapter. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So when it looks like this and it looks like that and it looks like this, here's the word to you that you are to know that God is working all things. It doesn't just say, well, all the bad things, God's going to make a way to make it look good and cause it to work. No, he says he's working all things. This is a good father. All things. He's forming, right now, God has been working all things. For good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be comforted or conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. You know, everyone here, everyone on this earth, he predestined you according to the word. Before you were born, he wrote your destiny in a book. This is not a predestination. Well, God chooses some and God doesn't choose others. No, you choose. I almost said you choose, stinker. You choose. You choose. Love always gave a choice from the beginning, but he wrote a destiny for you. You're even here this morning and he wrote a destiny and you might want to get in on that. But let's keep on listening here. So what do we say? Verse 31. So what do we say in response to all the things? And to, what do we say in response to every breath? Every breath that is against the, the very word of God. What do we say concerning what looks like this? Well, it doesn't matter if it looks like this. If God be for us, then who can be against us? I can take his word because he's for me and who is for me is uncomparably great. His power, not just his word, his word and his power go together, but it needs your connection. By grace, you've been saved through everyone, the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of it, doesn't, it looks like everything's not going the right way. You need something. You, if it can, just, power for salvation for those that believe. What do we say in response to all these things? Man, it sure is dark out here. Man, it sure looks bad. Man, this nation's going to hell. Man, I just don't know what we're going to do. Man, can you believe that they said that about me? what do we say in all these things if God be for us who can be against us he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things you know what that is how can he give you the grace that's what it is the grace for all things the grace to love when all you can seem to do is count every time they do this In the very place that God has set you, the very place he's joined you and the enemy wants to bring a schism, you constantly keep counting those things. Listen, there is a grace to stop counting the suffered wrongs. What are we going to say to all these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He's given us the grace for all the things because of Christ. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? In other words, uh, uh, keep this, keep going. It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. 
No one can condemn because Christ who died more than that, who was raised in life, is at the right hand of God and is interceding before us. He's saying, innocent. He's saying, Father, this is yours. Take, this, is your, this is your child. This is your child. Provision's been made by me for him. Provision's been made for healing by me for her. Come on. So, what do we say to all these things? We say the very last verse. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Is there anything? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or any care or any danger or sword or fear of your rights being taken away or, or anything? Is there anything that's greater than God's love for you? And his love for you is his, not just a word, it's an action towards you. There's nothing. No, he says this in verse 30, in all of these things, we're more than conquerors. Through him who loved us, for I am convinced that neither life nor death nor angels or demons, neither present or future, nor any powers, nor depth or height, nor anything, else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Listen, what you believe matters. I just shared with you the gospel. The price has been paid. Jesus came, paid a price for your sins. You know, sin, sin doesn't get talked about enough. In other words, if we don't understand that sin required a price, we just will go on like nothing ever mattered. Why did he have to pay for what didn't cost? No, let me tell you, your sins cost a lot. And the price for your sin, as the Bible says, is death. But Jesus came and paid the price because God loved us, because God loved you. That's the word. That's the word of God, if you'll receive it. Maybe you're here today and you haven't received Christ. Maybe you've never given your heart to Jesus. Maybe you've never said, I don't know everything, but I know that I don't know it all, and I know in my heart what you're saying, what you just read from the Bible is true. I don't understand it all, but I know that's right. He didn't say understand. He said, what did he say? What do you believe? Do you believe Jesus is Lord? Do you believe that every day, or one day, every knee will bow? Today would be a great day than to wait to the last day to bow your knee to the Lordship of Jesus Christ by simply saying with your mouth uh, what you are hearing in your heart, and that is, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe that God may sent Him here he came in the flesh, 1 John 4, 3. Every spirit, every spirit that says that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is from God. Listen, when you hear that, when you know that, that's right, you say it. Jesus came for me. Jesus came for you. Do you believe it? Then say it. If you've never, I want you to everybody stand on your feet. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, if you've never made that declaration from your heart, and I want you to engage your heart this morning. I want you to engage your spirit. Every person here, not just if, you, if it's your first time here, every person that sat in a service and repeated what a pastor has said but never engaged their heart, I want you to engage your heart, and I want you to ask you, do you believe that Jesus is Lord, do you believe that God sent His Son, Jesus, to die on a cross for you? Do you believe that? Then receive what He did there by opening your mouth and making that declaration of what you believe. Just say this with me. Say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God sent to die on a cross to pay the price for 
my sins. Today, I declare that I believe Jesus is not only Lord, but He's my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Today, right now, there is no condemnation from Christ, from God, because I'm in Christ. There is power today available for you who believe. And it's found in the Word of God that is spoken right here. Become independent. Become independent. Let's be a church that's independent. Right here. What does he say? What does he say? And say that. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you Wednesday night. Or is there Tuesday night prayer? No. Next Tuesday night. Anyway, love you all. Have a great day. See you Wednesday night.